Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host Stan Rutan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. How do I do that? I review the wines, I grade them and that's up to you. I review, it's up to you. It's your palate. And um, you know, as I mentioned before, March is watching Washington Wine Month which is a month where we recognize how far Washington has gone in the wine world, where they're at. Second largest producing state in the United States. Uh, and then New York is right behind Washington. Of course, we all know Cali is number one. And when I think of Washington wines, aside from the Syrahs that I did last time, which were a pair of big monster Syrahs, had my buddy Roger over after the episode, and we, we polished those bottles off because they were so good. Um, the other varietal that comes to my mind when it comes to Washington wines is Merlot. I mean Merlot is, um, you know, it's maligned. I know because of the um, because of the movie Sideways, you know, which is slowly but surely wearing off. People have got an attitude about Merlot, like, you know, it wasn't a wine drink. And Merlots are fantastic. As I pointed out many times, uh, you know, the left bank, right bank of the uh, Bordeaux is predominantly Merlot. You got uh, Pomerol that does mostly Merlot, um, Petrus, 100% Merlot, you know, Ch uh, Cheval Blanc, very famous uh, Bordeaux, is primarily Merlot. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't realize it, they just think of Merlot as something from the United States and from Chile and other places like that, but mostly from the United States is where you'll see Merlot. Uh, other than France. But Washington does a fantastic job with Merlot. I think they probably are the best Merlot producing state uh, or, or region just about anywhere. And they range from anywhere from 10 to, you know, up to, you can get them for 60, 70, 80 bucks a bottle uh, many times. Um, wow. I got stuck on that one for me. Anyway, they can go from expensive to cheap is what I'm trying to say, or in it, expensive to inexpensive. And it's a beautiful day outside. I'm having trouble concentrating. Sorry, one of these days I'm going to shoot this episode outside. I'm going to figure out a way to set it up out there because it's beautiful outside right now. I've got, you know, some woods behind me. I think I can set it up really nice. I think it'd be very cool. Let's get started, though, on this right away. Um, the first one I'm going to do is For a Song, 2011. Um... Merlot. Now they call it red wine. I'm going with Merlot on this because it's 90% Merlot. It's 90% Merlot, 5% Syrah, 5% Petit Verdot. And I don't know, they're probably just trying to, you see, they're trying to escape that Merlot label, which I think is really silly. Uh, Merlot is starting to chug along. Actually, I think that Syrah is actually recovering a little quicker than Merlot is. So, you know, that's the case. Let's see what we get on the nose. So I get really dusty cherries going through on the nose. A little bit of tobacco, which I find very intriguing. Fairly dark on this one. Aha, I got a white piece of paper. I don't know if you can see that, but you know, fairly dark uh, color. I'll leave that right there. I always should have a piece of white paper. I don't know why I don't. And thanks again, uh, just to, for those who loyally watch this program as I build my audience. I really appreciate those who watch it on a regular basis. It means a lot to me, it really does. Uh, shout out to my buddy Matthew, both my Matthew buddies, and Scott for watching these programs and for giving me some tips on how to increase my audience. I just got a good tip from uh, Matthew from Unique Wines, told me uh, some of the techies at his office told him, you know, put the names of the wines in your title, not just Stan the Wine Man episode, whatever. And, you know, hopefully that helps. I've also uh, had some conversations with different ones on... Uh, techies on how to get a tr um, an introduction into my videos. I'm working on that. So expect some improvements over the year 2015. Even getting a little licorice on this. Let's see what we get on the palate. Now this goes for 10 bucks. I forgot to mention that. And it comes from 2011. And we hate to say tough vintage because a lot of great winemakers um, are able to make wines in good wines in tough vintages. Uh, but 11 was a very difficult vintage for a lot of winemakers. Now 
actually I'm wrong on that price. This is $12 a bottle. Excuse me, I have the wrong price written on there. I just remembered that they had increased a little bit. But that being said, it's a $12 bottle of wine. Good fruit. I mean, just nice cherries and currants coming through. Good weight in the mouth. I mean, you get a lot of fruit in this wine. But at the same time, you get some nice dusty tannins. Good structure. Nice acidity. It has a bright edge to it. Yeah, I'm brave. Wearing a white shirt today. Got to be careful. Just remember that if you ever go to a wine tasting, wear a dark shirt. No matter how good you are, you're going to get some wine on it. I hope I don't get some today. Just, it just felt like, you know, it's getting really close to spring. It's a beautiful day outside. I just had to wear the lighter colors. Anyway, I get some tobacco on the backside. This has a decent finish. It's not super long, but it's good. There's a lot of you that would love this wine. For 12 bucks, this is a great bang for the buck. A lot of tobacco on the finish. Good red flowers combined with the currants and cherries. Not a super complex, but very good. I'm going to go B on this wine for $12. It's a great play. And you probably want to see the label. There you go. For a song. And they call it just red wine because they're afraid of the Merlot tag. But they shouldn't be, really. Come on, guys. I want you guys to be forerunners. 12 bucks. Great wine, B. I'm going with that. Now we're going to move on. This uh, Waterbrook has been around Washington State for a long time. One of the uh, wineries that, one of the older wineries in Washington State. I didn't look up how long they've been around, but they've been around a long time. I can remember when Waterbrook Chardonnay was on every wine list in every restaurant around. So, this is $24. It's a Reserve Merlot 2000. And eight, so it has some age on it. So there you go. Excited to try this wine. Um, Columbia Valley. I think the other one was Columbia Valley also. Columbia Valley is a huge appellation, and inside of Columbia Valley appellation, there's many, many others: Yakima, Waldoop Slope. Um, the list goes on and on. Columbia Valley is huge. So they source fruit from different appellations inside the Columbia Valley appellation. I think there's only like two or three that are not out of the 13 or 14 appellations in Washington State. Only two or three are not in the Columbia Valley large appellation. So very, very deep, deep, rich currants on the nose with a little bit of tobacco. I'm getting chocolate tones, which is always interesting. I love it when I get chocolate tones on a wine. It seems to add some dimensions to it that don't develop into chocolate on the palate, but develop into other layers of fruit flavors. There's a little like spice box, like uh, baking spices on the nose, which I find very intriguing. Let's see what we get on the palate. Letting the princess cat out, otherwise she'll start scratching. Big difference in these two wines. Um, love the Forest Song, but this one has definitely got a bigger, bolder flavor profile. It's really big into the currants. Tobacco underneath, big time. The baking spices come through on the back side of this wine. Now, like I said, there's no chocolate, but there's a little bit of what, what I'd call a beauty bark element on this wine. Very smooth. I mean, this wine is um, extremely smooth. A little bit of leather coming through on the backside, which I like. Twenty-four bucks. It'd be I'd be hard pressed to find somebody who wouldn't like 
this Merlot. And the only reason, I tell you right now, the only reason somebody would not buy this is because it says Merlot on it, which I think is baloney. I think you need to get over yourself if you're on that. I'm sorry. Don't mean to be that rough. But really, these are great wines, and this is a classic example of what you're missing out on if you're just avoiding it because it says Merlot. If you're, if you're really into wine, and you really understand it, and you really get the whole picture, it doesn't matter what it says on the label, as long as it's good, right? So, you need to reach out. If you're not doing Merlot now, I would encourage you to take that step. Nobody, if anybody looks down on you for that, then they can go fly a frickin' kite. You know, because Merlot's great. This is a great one. I'm going to go A- on that. I think it's a great bottle of Merlot. 24 bucks. Good job. On to the next one. Bernard Griffin, Ciel de Cheval, Merlot, 2009. And Ciel de Cheval is a classic vineyard up on Red Mountain. And I did notice on their website that they have this down to $24. And $35 is a, the, the original price. Now, that being said, if they got it down to 24 bottles and uh, 24 bucks, and this wine is showing really well, I would encourage you to get online, barnardgriffin.com, or just Google Barnard Griffin and buy some. But let's see how it is. Big fan of uh, uh, Rob Griffin. I think he's a great winemaker. He uh, finally, finally started going to Vineyard Designate Wines, which he should have done, and he's made a Pinot that's pretty impressive also. Let's see what we get on the nose. Right off the bat, I get a little stink action, which I like. Stink, is, stink action is not a bad thing when it comes to wine. A little like uh, leather soaked, <laughs> leather soaked in currants. I'm definitely getting like a black licorice thing coming through on the back end. A little bit of chocolate. There's some baking spices coming through. This nose is really nice. I really like the aromatics on this wine. A lot of stuff going on. You could smell this wine for a while and really get a lot of things out of it. Let's see what we get on the palate. See, I had to smell it again. I had to. I'm also getting violets, which is really interesting. Like, um, like almost wilted violets. Let's see what we get on the palate. Sweet tannins. I mean, this has got really good fruit, but it's not a fruit bomb by any stretch of the imagination. A little bit of leather on the backside. Good currants, good structure. This is a good bottle of wine. There's only one little flaw in this wine. And I think it's just this bottle. It's not doing anything as far as the flavor profile. It's just throwing me off. There's a little spritz on the tongue. I'm not sure what's causing that. Um, could be um, in the bottling process. Uh, there's some gas in the, the uh, wine that was got caught in there during the bottling. But uh, this is the first bottle I've had from them that this has done that. So when you're buying this wine online, uh, I doubt if they're going to have this flaw in those wines. It is definitely uh, something that you would, might throw you off. I'm going to eliminate that part of it because in the rest of that wine, I mean, just the structure, the weight, the tannins, everything about this Merlot is really, really interesting and very, very well-built bottle of wine. Ciel de Cheval is a great vineyard to source fruit from, and Rob's done a great job with this wine. Um, I'm going to go I'm going to go A- on this one, only because if that flaw is showing up in the other bottles, um, 
you know, they need to give you your money back. I could drink this wine as it is right now just because it is so tremendous. Without that particular element in the wine, I would say it's an A wine for sure. And um, I'm going to have to get myself another bottle and see. Nice stuff. So if you want to try Merlot, go to Washington State. They make excellent Merlot. Thanks for watching. And remember, always be willing to try new things, even Merlot, and expand your palate horizons. But always be true to your palate. Understand what you like or don't like and never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't like. If you do that together, we can take the snob out of wine.